also, if I may add, all of the users who are willing to spend the brain power, and uh, they would be much better served by having a larger user base to uh, share privacy with. So, for everything, uh, everyone has there is joy in market. <laughs> well, even if you're like an expert user, if you have a much larger pool of users, um, you could obtain much better privacy, even if the tool doesn't give you um, like fine grained control over everything uh, for, for exactly the same reason as the, like the anonymity loves company argument, basically. Um, if you make the a privacy tool more accessible to more users, then the crowd in which everybody's hiding becomes uh, that much larger. And therefore the, the requirement to have uh, precise control over everything uh, diminishes. Like you, you no longer need to, to have those um, fine tuning um, knobs in, in order to, to, to get what you want. If what you're trying is to maximize how much privacy you get uh, within a reasonable amount of time for a specific cost, right? Like you, you determine how much you're willing to pay for privacy based on your uh, risk tolerance. And then the tool lets you effectively, I mean, it's just like any other Bitcoin wallet, you just buy block space. Um, and the the privacy assurance, uh, that's not a direct cost, right? That That has to do with how you're building those transactions, how you actually utilize the block space. And if you're utilizing the block space that you buy um, in the company of many other users who don't really care about maximizing everything and like, you know, getting every last bit of value out of every virtual byte that you actually pay for, um, the still the, the quality of privacy that you obtain is, is gonna be much higher for the very simple reason that the crowd in which you're hiding is, is much bigger. Yeah, I mean, I'm not talking about the non-default workflows, right? I'm uh, concentrating on the default workflows because that's relevant for most of the people. Are you guys familiar with Mercury Wallet? I, I think it's a wallet that uh, just implemented uh, Ruben Thompson's state chain swaps, I think they're called, where you trade private keys trustlessly. Um, do you guys have any plans to implement something similar into Wasabi or is uh, your focus mostly on on the Xiaomi and coin join? I think that that has a wonderful potential for uh, synergy between the two like privacy technologies. Um, at the lower level details, the Wabi Sabi protocol um, makes it possible to, to register an arbitrary output type. So uh, even though we're not doing like making use of that um, uh, initially, like it's just going to be paid to pubkey hash. Um, in principle, there's no reason why you cannot um, generate state chain coins uh, as outputs of coin joins, and why you could not uh, withdraw your uh, state chain coins from, like, into a coin join transaction in order to obscure the the path of where the the money is going. There's some nuances there with. Um, like state chain transfers are not um, like they never touch the chain and uh, the outputs on their own are um, uh, they, they appear at least with Mercury's implementation that uses um, not what Ruben Somson originally proposed, which uh, if I remember correctly relies on uh, like something like Sigash no input. Um, this uses uh, a slightly different approach, um, and the um, the on-chain footprint is going to be um, a lot more covert. So when you see a coin join transaction, everybody knows that's a coin join transaction. Um, when you see a, a, a state chain deposit or withdrawal, there, there's plausible deniability there. So um, I think that there's a different use case. Um, but even so, for, for users who are served by both, um, it would make a whole lot of sense to use both. Uh, and um, this also has a very like positive sum um, outcomes, because if every output of a coin join could have potentially also been swapped between like being created and being spent, um, like there's um, a much stronger like fungibility there. Um, 
and um, it also interacts in a, in a nice way. So for, for state change swaps, you need to use um, uh, outputs of exactly the same value because otherwise like one user is is effectively paying another user. Um, so the approach that we've taken with uh, the uh, Wabi Sabi coin joins is to standardize uh, some of the values. Um, and I think that that's also going to be um, uh, quite helpful. Like the, the default way a, a coin join output appears uh, would also make sense if what you're trying to, to create is a swappable uh, state chain coin. Um, so um, yeah, just to summarize, uh, on a technical level, the integration is possible. I think in terms of the benefits to users, there's very good reasons to integrate. And um, uh, it's not on the agenda right now, um, uh, but like in the future, I would very much like to see the the flexibility of the protocol um, used to, to do this and, and other similar things as well. So um, uh, coin swaps could integrate with this uh, lightning channel funding. Um, with dual funding, it gets even more interesting. Um, so there, there's all sorts of uh, potential for, um, um, I think a, a good way of um, looking at it is every one of these layer two protocols still needs to anchor somewhere on, on chain. Um, and it's not strictly better to always do that in a coin join because that's an overt thing. Um, but it does make a lot of sense in some cases. And uh, I think if it's normalized, if it's not treated as sketchy, right, to, to protect your own privacy, like if that's just a normal thing that everybody does, then in principle, um, like the way I think the future should look like is uh, blocks that just contain giant coin join transactions and everything else, all of the payment technologies, all of the uh, like layer two privacy solutions, uh, smart contracting stuff, that all like anchors in this like much more fungible uh, basis. And there's there's kind of a, like a nice meme, which is, um, Bitcoin is fungible, right? It's it's fungible at the Satoshi level inside of transactions. Where the problems with fungibility arise is the the transaction graph and the the fact that we heuristically identify transactions as representing the actions of a, of a single user. Um, if we can let go of that assumption and let the the protocol evolve. Um, no changes are necessary at the consensus level to have perfect fungibility, or, or maybe not perfect, but almost perfect. Um, and the extreme case is just imagine if every single block is literally just one giant coin join, um, and like nobody knows how that was constructed because the the details of how that was negotiated was um, uh, it's it's not a consensus protocol. Um, that's still Bitcoin. And um, I think that future can be realized. And um, I think it's it's more of um, like, a, a, I guess, a, a political thing, right? This like use it or lose it sort of proposition. If you, if you don't, if, if Bitcoin users don't assert that they deserve privacy and fungibility, um, then at some point the absence of their is going to be normalized, and um, I think the the project will will have failed on, at least on some level. Um, Adam, um, this question is for you. How simple do you think that Wasabi wallet can be? Um, I realize that I realize right now that you guys do not have um, mobile um, interface for users. How how simple do you think how simplified do you think that Wasabi can be, especially when you when you consider that I saw someone on, on a video where um, I don't know his name, but he said that most people are idiots, uh, retards, and I kind of agree. You know, the rest of us are just you know plebs and normies who don't have no regards you know for privacy. And how how <clears throat> how far are you willing to go to ensure that people can have um, privacy at their level? Do you think that, okay, um, <clears throat> this is how far we're willing to go. If you consider privacy important enough, then you would meet us at that point. Or do you think that, or do you think you can simplify it enough for them? Or, or do you think that, or is, can you do that? <clears throat> Are there trade-offs that, you know, you would have to, 
you know, are there things that you have to, you know, compromise on to give them some sort of, you know, privacy? Yeah, I have no, no doubt in my mind that uh, a privacy Bitcoin experience can be just as simple as any other Bitcoin wallet or even simpler if the UI designers are really good at it, right? Uh, what I'm, um, I have uh, concerns about the long, long term is more like the cost of privacy. Um, the user experience is, is, is probably going to be like as, as grandma friendly as you can imagine. <laughs> I'm still I'm still stuck on the not stuck. Sorry, I'm still uh, thinking about the last the last question um, before for Jerry's. And it's like uh, you were saying that it's like a use it or lose it kind of uh, thing, which I think you're right. Um, but I guess would you do you not feel that maybe the the onus is probably more on different wallets out there and like owners and of wallets and 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 kind of the people because i feel like um especially as we do enter this early majority from the early adopter stage uh do you do, do you i i feel as if people a lot of people who are getting to bitcoin or using bitcoin surely probably more people now using bitcoin more people probably don't understand half of how it works than than the people who do right like we're probably at that point now where i'm going to guess 75 percent people probably don't understand much on how bitcoin even works probably don't even know what utxo is uh that's my guess um so maybe i i feel like the onus is on really people who are uh, designing and, and creating wallets rather than on the user because i think the users probably don't know right like it'd be good for users to scream for privacy but um they don't really know a lot of people think bitcoin's anonymous anyway <laughs> like a lot of people who don't know about it think it's anonymous anyway so is it is it worth you know we try and do a campaign to you know force not force but you know to incentivize or or to put pressure on designers and creators and hosted wallets and and other things to actually implement coin join i don't know what your thoughts are but I, I, that's where i feel like the onus is actually is on like people designing wallets people who have the ability to implement coin join but on or maybe even have a button right for the user to say do you want to pay this much more of a fee but your transaction will be more private whatever and people at least the user can decide i don't what, what do you what do you what do you both of you guys think about that i don't know if it's uh if you'd agree or not if i mean tie that to jerry's question I think it boils down to priorities. Uh, like Bitcoin is a very hard system to work with. First, you need to spend realistically several years like understanding what it even does, how it works, how to, to use it, what are the like the the flaws, uh, how you work around those flaws, etc. And the coin join stuff for a mobile wallet. Um, so that there's a, a I guess a spin-off version, uh, Chaincase. So this is an iOS wallet that's built with uh, the Wasabi 1.0 code, uh, but with a new UI. And uh, the guy developing it, uh, Dan Gould, has been, uh, like, his experiments are, I think, quite successful. Um, uh, I haven't used it myself. I have no iPhone. Um, but my understanding is that uh, it works quite well, although it's not... Um, the the approach to constructing the coin joins is a little bit different than Wasabi uh, currently does. Um, but the main challenges that he's been facing, I think, are, well, how, how do you deal with things like uh, iOS restricting how you run background tasks because of the, the battery issues? So, like, now you have this super low-level thing, right? Like, the, the battery management code is restricting how much time your app gets to use. And here, like, at the, a very high level, uh, like you need to run coin joins um, through Tor within some time window where all of the users are interacting with each other through the server. How do you bridge those two things? It's it's almost like it's got nothing to do with the coin joins, right? The, the challenges are about the environment for, for which you're developing. And, um, and I think tying that back in, into your question, the, the, like, I think most wallet developers would probably not, like, if they've decided to spend their time on Bitcoin, then they probably um, have um, political or ideological opinions um, 
about fungibility and privacy and censorship resistance that are uh, very likely to be compatible with, uh, like, I, I think it's it's very unlikely that there are um, wallet developers out there who think that the best thing for Bitcoin is to integrate KYC into every layer or something. Um, and the challenge that they're up against is they want to provide value with the features that distinguish their, their wallet. Um, and you cannot really have privacy in a robust and meaningful uh, way integrated into a wallet without making that a, a primary priority. Um, and in order to do that, you need so much support code. Like uh, I think one of the things that is is often like neglected in discussions about Bitcoin privacy that Wasabi uh, 1.0 already did very comprehensively is how do you interact with the Bitcoin network? How do you discover your, your coins on the blockchain uh, as, a, as a light client? Um, how do you broadcast transactions privately? Like even Bitcoin Core um, has uh, some serious flaws with regards to that. Um, so I, I think my best hope is for, um, uh, in, in particular, Taproot really uh, ties into that, that as the ecosystem progresses and we go into this like second or third generation of, of wallets where um, a lot of the lessons from the past have been kind of um, so like first there were just private keys um, and then we started having like um, much more of a light client uh, focused um, like approach uh, we had uh, uh, BIP32 wallets, so uh, hierarchical deterministic wallets. So you only needed to back up one seed uh, for an entire collection of addresses. And the address reuse issues were, were mitigated by that. And, um, and this is evolution has been like really slow. Um, and the, I think the reason is it's slow is that it's just really hard to, to take care of, of everything. And what I'm kind of hopeful for um, in the coming years is that um, increasingly wallet developers will build abstractions that they can share. Um, and uh, this is kind of what Wabi Sabi is, is uh, I guess, intended to be in the very long run. It's, it's a very general protocol that you can use in, in different ways and integrate into a client in, in different ways. Uh, of course, that will require the rest of the ecosystem to, to uh, either re-implement what we do or, or um, uh, be able to uh, reuse what we're building right now. And that, that's not a priority uh, currently. Um, but like, I, I think as an ecosystem, we need to reduce the, the, uh, the barriers for developers to um, be able to consider privacy a goal, something that is in scope for their wallet, um, even if that's not their main priority. And um, like take any like lightning node, um, uh, like in the last podcast, I said uh, like lightning is not for payments. Um, I, I kind of like wish I hadn't said that in that way because what I actually meant was 10, 15 years down the line, I think the lightning network will still be around, but it's not going to be the technology through which like you buy a coffee. Uh, I think it's going to evolve into like a settlement network sort of thing. So um, like right now, Lightning developers are dealing with a complex coordination problem uh, with a, a, a layer two protocol that's uh, constantly evolving, that's constantly anticipating future soft forks and how we can use them. And there's just not enough time to get all of the details right. Um, and for this reason, Lightning privacy uh, has has kind of uh, been relegated to to a secondary priority right now. It's just like what we're trying to. We uh, I'm not involved in that, but like what um, Lightning developers are trying to do is is make it a usable payment technology for the next like five years or something. Um, and similarly with with like mobile wallets, um, the 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 challenges are just so. Um, uh, uh, they they accumulate and they add up. Um, that it's it's very hard to uh, to criticize people for not building privacy into their their wallets right now. Um, I hope that made sense. How does the recent Taproot soft fork like impact uh, what you guys are doing? I've I've heard things from other people that like coin swap is going to become cheaper than the normal Bitcoin transaction, and like the increased uh, smart contract capabilities that Taproot's going to 
uh, unfold for Bitcoin, like, is that going to impact your work with Wasabi? It shouldn't matter that much. Uh, I think this is a, a soft fork that uh, mainly uh, makes it much, um, it removes the conflict between having complicated policies as a sort of last resort or complicated smart contracts. Like now you no longer need to pay for that upfront. Uh, you only pay for it if you use it, when you need to use it. Um, and for coin joins, this doesn't really make a difference, right? Like um, uh, th there, there's no barrier. Like we can integrate Taproot uh, in principle, like right now already. Um, the main argument not to do that is that um, it's just not widely used yet. There's there's going to be some, you know, if if now Wasabi uh, will force a back 32M address for data taproot uh, like output. Uh, exchanges are not going to support that yet, and that's good. But like in time with adoption, I think it's going to be a, like a very natural step forward, and something that's going to uh, be much more relevant for how you integrate um, like layer two protocols. Uh, so if you could like pair your Lightning node with Wasabi, um, and um, instead of having a Lightning node like manage its own wallet with UTXOs, um, it was just like an RPC based thing. So like scan a QR code or something, the two applications start talking to each other, and the the Lightning node asks Wasabi like, "Hey, I need to fund a channel," um, and then Wasabi does that through CoinJoin. Um, that would be a very nice thing to to um, to have, um, and I think demand for that will only materialize once Taproot is is widely used. Um, so, um, yeah, short answer: it shouldn't really affect things, but I mean, it will affect things indirectly. Uh, I don't know if this question might make sense. Um, like I said, I am a retard, and but I want to ask: what um, this is to you all? What improvements do you think are made to Bitcoin, maybe on the protocol level, or maybe do you think, um, maybe not hands-on um, in, uh, improvements, maybe do you think the, the developers should like scale back on the amounts of, you know, um, soft forks that they do? What improvements do you think are made that will make the work on Wasabi easier? I don't think any, any of the soft forks um, that are currently kind of in discussion. Um, I think they're all orthogonal to coin joins, apart from cross signature input aggregation, which is uh, like not as far as I know that there aren't any concrete proposals um, yet. So um, I think for the same reason that Taproot will affect things uh, indirectly. Um, much more generally than CoinJoin, uh, privacy and fungibility will benefit a whole lot from uh, SIG hash no input or uh, any prev out. Um, so a BIP 118. Um, um, and that is fundamentally, I think, a, a scaling technology. And, and the other kind of soft work that I'm excited about is um, like anything. So technically, that's already enough to achieve covenants. But I think we could uh, get something even more interesting where in the future, um, I, I honestly believe that most people will not be interacting with uh, UTXOs exactly. Like you will have one or two UTXOs that are you own a stake in. Um, and what you actually have is a virtual UTXO that if everything proceeds correctly, um, that thing never materializes on chain. It, there's never a transaction broadcast that spends or funds it. Or, um, but the possibility of being able to to use it uh, on chain, um, that like that should be enough to actually be able to to transact. Um, and and that kind of like far off future is is uh, much more privacy friendly, much more fungibility friendly. Um, and so like the, the fates of these things are, are kind of tied. Like I, I think Bitcoin will need some additional soft forks in order to actually succeed in, in, uh, uh, like realizing its, its potential. Um, but I don't, I don't see like direct, um, um, like a, 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 apart from cross signature input aggregation, which kind of changes the incentives. So all of a sudden 
it becomes sensible to use coin joins for purely as a cost saving measure. Uh, whereas right now, um, it's it's always going to cost you at least a little bit more. So you the the only plausible reason to use coin joins right now is um, for privacy. Um, I, I think that's the only thing that will be directly affected. But the indirect effects are are in in some sense much more important because that determines what users will actually um, want, right? How how they actually make um, use this thing to transmit value to each other and um, how how they define um, what threats they're they're um, uh, they need to, to account for and um, uh, what security um, it, it provides. So um, yeah, I, I hope that's a, a satisfying answer. Okay.